Well, hello everyone. Didn't think I'd be back again with this video, but here we are. This is a follow-up video for the Panini sticker state of the market that we did sort of recent uh, video that was uploaded just a few days ago. If you haven't checked it, do go back and watch it as that will give you the needed preliminary understanding that you are going to need for this video. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. It's probably going to be a long one, so I'm going to pour myself a nice cold drink. Recommend you do the same. Um, yeah, going to try to keep it to 30, 40 minutes, probably. <laughs> we'll see where it goes, but let's hop into it. So I will give sort of a brief summary on the first video in terms of, you know, how I saw it and what I was thinking. Um, so we started the video talking about fake stickers. Um, I am doing this from the perspective of at least my intent behind the video was to share with people my concerns with Panini stickers at the moment um, and why I just don't really see them as a quote unquote great investable vehicle. Um, my hobby participation over the last few years has made me very skeptical of them being a good quote unquote investment vehicle, uh, especially some of the more pre modern ones and especially some of the intermediary. Uh, pre-modern items, some of the more niche middle ground pieces. So we start by talking about fake stickers, stickers that have been basically proven to have been faked and graded. Ronaldo, Messi, Benzema. And then I also go on to add what's next, you know, who's the next up? That, that was sort of a question that I found interesting. And as you can see here, um, the implication being it would be these types of stickers. And that's sort of what I was thinking with the video is that eventually I feel like we're going to see fakes of these, right? If I would have believed that the next two stickers we're going to talk about were included in the what's next in terms of those are faked next, I would have put them in here. The Zlatan and the Iniesta we're talking about both would have been on the slide because in theory, I would have thought they're fake. So I go on to talk about the Zlatan large find that happened recently, a decent jump in the pop right here. The more notable part of this was that it was mostly in nines and even 110 when prior, I don't think any were even graded in that range. So that was a huge find, not only in terms of quantity, but also gem condition. Um, I then also talk about the NES, and this was one that was way more jarring to me because not only was it a huge find in terms of quantity, we also went from five gems to 27 gems. The closest, I believe, I haven't gone back and listened to the whole thing, but at least from recording it and what I remember, the closest I came to saying that any sort of fake type thing was going on with these stickers was that this chart screams fake to me and it still does, right? These could turn out to be authentic. That chart still screams fake to me because from what we've seen in soccer, most of the time when a huge find happens like this and there's like 80% gems on this submission up here, that makes me just abundantly nervous. That's just the way it is. Um, and that is no fault of the submitter. That's no fault of anyone in particular. However, that's not sort of the way that it was taken by some, especially some that are more in the know and understand who owns these stickers. So some perceptions here, how some perceived it. Uh, we have mustard cards. He says, you never mentioned him or the fakes yet alluded to both heavily him being Panini vibes. The person in the second comment here, that is the owner of the two stickers, the submitter of those two hordes. Mustard says when everyone who watches the video is thinking about those two things it kind of ends up being the point of the video regardless of your intention um you know in my defense i don't think most people that watch the video even knew that panini vibes was related to it in any way i do think that maybe a hundred people that watched it probably knew the connection but 700 people watched it and there's only maybe 200 active members in the vintage discord i don't believe all of them are actively watching my channel all the time so maybe like 15 percent of people knew the correlation but I, I don't think most people knew and honestly i didn't say his name because I didn't want hate going his way, nor did I feel comfortable to say that he faked these, and nor was that my belief. So, you know, I, I didn't say it for a reason, right? Uh, Panini Vibes messages me and he says, the way I'm marking them with X's seems like you have a feeling that they're fake. Um, more so, what, what he's referencing here is the Warzone uh, slide that I made in the last video, where I put X's over these. Uh, this was not, in accordance to being fake stickers, but this was more in the sense that the people's perception of these stickers have been entirely altered to the point where they are not what people once thought they were. Some because they were fake, some because there have been huge fines. That was the intent of the slide. Uh, if we go back to perceptions, Jamie, UK guy, we'll talk about him later. He sent me a lot of nasty DMs uh, for no reason, but uh, he says, you need to explain to me how Panini Vibes is getting fakes. I've seen him open and source some stickers. You are accusing me of faking with my own eyes. Please let me know. False baseless claims are pretty fucked up and almost as bad as scamming. So 
It seems that people took this as me accusing Panini Vibes of printing fake stickers. And while I can see how you could follow the steps that I was taking and then take a step, a two, maybe three more, and eventually you get to the idea that I think that, that's great. I can see how people get to that point, but I never said it. And I think that that's something that's an important part of this because if I believe something, I'm gonna say it, all right? This is a niche YouTube channel with a very, very niche audience. Uh, I have no fears of saying something if I truly believe it. Uh, as we saw lately, I've made a video absolutely lambasting modern and hating on it, and I made a video talking about how I don't think the two first year sets that everyone loves to pump are as cool as people think they are. Jamie sent me, <laughs> both of these videos are extremely controversial, and if I was in the business of just not saying things for the sake of not saying things, or not trying to ruffle feathers, or if I'm trying to beat around the bush, I wouldn't make these videos. So, so I am not fearful to say what I think. Um, you know, these types of videos aren't going to make me a fan favorite. And despite that, I still make them because it's my genuine hobby experience. It's how I view the space. And, you know, I think it's enjoyable content and fun, at least for me. And it seems like others. So I make the videos. Uh, I say what I think and I'm not afraid to. So if I say something, I mean it. And if I don't say something, please don't put those words into my mouth and say that that is what I'm saying. Because if I wanted to say it, I would have. I would have said, Panini Vibes, fake stickers, look at them right here. Here's his IG, here's his Discord, here's the gem rates. This guy's an absolute piece of shit. You know, I could, I could say all those things, but I don't believe those things, so I don't say them, okay? I think that's pretty clear. I think a lot of people probably took it this way, but obviously some didn't. But here, when I talk about fake stickers, I label them fake stickers, right? Um, then I talk about what's next and I don't have any of those stickers in here that are what we'll talk about next under the huge fines category, which are right here, large, well, hu large fines, huge fines. You get the idea. Large fines. If I thought they were fakes, I would have just said new fakes. You know, here's a new fake. Here's another new fake. Look at these new fakes. Um, I didn't think that they were fake. I didn't say they were fake. The NES is I'm still partially concerned about, whether it be that PSA was just insanely loose on their grading of this submission, or if maybe they are fake and, you know, none of the parties along the line other than the originator actually know that, right? You can buy and submit fake stickers without knowing they're fake. A strange scenario for me is I bought two stickers from Italy back in the day of like a 2018 rookie or something along those lines, and one of them graded a PSA 10 and one of them was not authentic and I bought them both from the same place. So does that make me a bad guy if that 10 actually was faked and just got through or does that make PSA a bad guy if both of them were real but they graded one of them not authentic? I don't know. There's just a lot of question marks along the way with this type of stuff and it's hard to be sure because PSA sometimes isn't even sure. We've seen them make plenty of mistakes. So I have a right to question what I want along the way. The process for stickers has been so fickle up until this point that there are tons of reasons to have questions and I think that that's fair. Again, if I thought that these were fake, if I was so certain of myself and wanted to accuse that guy at Panini Vibes of creating fakes, I would have just said, these are fake, fake stickers. Look at these new fake stickers. I didn't say that, all right? And I didn't say it for a reason. I think it's also interesting. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at this one real quick, but basically, why would I believe he's printing fakes? Like, you you have to you have to look at this from some angles, right? People want to say I am saying that he's creating fakes or that I am alluding to him creating fakes. Why would I even think this, right? Is it logical for me to even think this in the first place? This guy follows me on Instagram. He has an Instagram account where he posts a bunch of different high grade stickers. He got 14 posts, but obviously he's got you know more that he submits, yada yada. He posts in Discord too. He has 900 posts in Discord. If you're gonna be someone that is printing fake stickers and selling them to the soccer card community, you are likely not going to have an Instagram where you post these, and you are likely not going to be in the Discord with 940 posts and DMing with me about it at the same time, right? You are going to be someone that wants to be as far away from this as possible and don't want to be involved in it. So from a logical standpoint, I'm not going to accuse this guy of printing fakes. That's why I didn't do it. All right. If I thought he did, I would have said he did. I didn't have that as a genuine belief of mine. So why people are making me even defend something I didn't say nor ever think is 
it's strange, but here we are. I just want to clear the sort of air up for people and at least give them my side. And also, you know, clear his name. He wanted his name clear and, you know, I, I didn't feel it was totally necessary in the sense of, I, I didn't think that many people were probably going to go after him. I don't really think that happened. I think he's probably more so worried about how people view his stickers and the values that they then will take on rather than, you know, if people in the comments section of this video agree with him or, you know, not. I, I don't think that that's the case. I think he's probably looking out for himself, which is totally fair and I understand it. So now we'll talk about some of the accusations he and his friends have thrown my way. Um, he has said up until this point that I was aware that these were authentic stickers, but that I am hiding it from people. Um, of which I don't believe that to be the case. If we scroll back here, we're in the warning section of the Vintage Discord, do check it out, would highly recommend. The one that he actually provides really good proof on of being authentic is this uh, 2001 Panini football of Zlatan. So basically someone in the Discord, I think it was uh, Pelkey, yeah, Pelkey up here says uh, he has concern about these 2001 Zlatans. Along the way, uh, people sort of spark up, you know, some ideas, some wonderings of what's going on. On. Um, he then, you know, gets pretty defensive and says, you know, people think I'm, I'm printing stickers. I have nothing to lie about. You know, people do some more prodding, talk back and forth. Eventually we get to the point where he posts the sealed albums that he found them in, which is a very reassuring, you know, post. I, I appreciate that from him. He doesn't have to do this type of stuff, but it also does help alleviate concerns from the people involved. And so I do appreciate that. So in regard to the Zlatans, I was aware of this. And that is why when I looked at the Zlatans, I don't, ever think I said that they were fake. Um, I don't even think I used the word fake in that. Uh, I did say that the distribution of grades was weird, and I still stand by that. Uh, to get 11 nines, and there's still only one eight, one seven, one ten. It's weird that they all hit nines. You know, you would think some are a little higher, a little lower, but it is what it is. Uh, so the Zlatans, I never really had that much concern about, even when making the video. The NESs are a little different. Uh, I'll go back to some conversations that we had in the past. So basically, he reached out to me initially whenever I saw the NESs on PWCC and sort of was wondering. Uh, that was after a $3,800 sale. And he talks about how they're real. Uh, he saw so many stickers from the set. But the interesting part and why I'm, you know, a little weary... He says he found no Iniesta and Alvarez portrait shots, so those are the rarer versions of these stickers. So to find, as we'll come to find out, he found 50 to 60 Iniesta action shots, but he found zero portraits of either Iniesta or Alves. And then he sends, you know, some Zidans, uh, some more Zidans, uh, a Torres, and he says he found some Ronaldos too. So he sends like five to ten sort of odd and end stickers to help show that they're real. That really doesn't prove a whole lot to me. I mean, that's not like proof that the other ones are real just because you send me some other stickers. I mean, it helps, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't mean it's proved. I, I don't get that. Uh, he then goes on to say, I took everything worth grading. I do find it interesting that he says the Zidane headshots and the Ronaldos I don't think will gem. Um... But then he says the Zidane actions, I, I'm hopeful quite a few will. Keeping it moving, I say, thanks for sharing. I understand we are far from having everything in Europe graded. He does say that a lot where he's like, you know, Americans don't understand what there is out in Europe. I think that's true. I think he also doesn't have quite the understanding of how scared people are of fake stickers in the hobby. Uh, I think if, you know, maybe we both understood each other a bit more on that one, we might see a little bit more eye to eye. Uh, we then go on, I say, my concerns merely come from seeing a PSA 10 a pop go from 5 to 20 all in one submission. It's alarming, even if they are authentic, which is the point of my video and the point of what we're talking about here. It's alarming if they're real or not, and I'll tell you why. Because if they're not real, while that is terrible for the situation, eventually PSA is going to weed those out of the population and we would be back down to five. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of someone who already owns these, which I will say I own neither of these, never have, you know, eventually you'll get back to five. If they're authentic, that's a pop 20 now forever, and that changes things drastically. So even if they're fake, that's going to suppress prices for a bit and eventually come back to a pop five. If they're authentic, it's a pop 20 forever and that is going to suppress prices as long as they are out there. You know, my concern is still there no matter the case. I say from my research of checking graded copies, 80 to 85% of these NESs are default off center. So that was, again, something that was concerning to me is that, you know, four out of every five, even higher than that, you know, maybe every six out of every seven, something along those lines of these come off center 
by default. So getting a 10, especially at the clip that he did, is pretty crazy. And I think he even has to admit that himself. I think he does. I understand that completely. Totally agree. I was shocked when I found them because the set is so off center. Um, I say, so to have 15 full center copies in perfect condition would require somewhere along the lines of 75 to 100 near mint copies. And that's the important part is to get that many centered, you would need 75 to 100 PSA nines or something, maybe PSA eights, whatever. I mean, you get the idea, but you need a basically gem mint card plus the centering to work out for you. Um, and then I say, does he have a hundred ish copies or were they all centered? I'm trying to get some info on it. Basically he says he had maybe 40 to 60. So let's just say 50, not all of them perfectly centered. Some had uh, a few nicks. He had them lying around in a box, no sleeves, no top loaders. So, you know, by my estimation, he would need 75, probably closer to hundred of these copies in perfect condition to get the PSA 10 with the centering right? At least from what I found in terms of historical sales and all that. He says instead he had half of that and that some were, you know, off center. Some had quite a few nicks. Um, they were in a box with no sleeves, no top loaders. So naturally, so naturally that didn't do a lot to sort of quell my worries. Uh, we then go on. I understand it's just odd that guy has 50 copies laying around, some of which are ding, some of which are off center, but somehow there's still 15 gem mint copies in there. I don't know if he submitted the second batch of PSA 10s for that Iniesta. There was like another, I think like seven more. It went from a pop five to 27. So I'm assuming, but I do not know. He doesn't really have to answer if they are his or not. It doesn't, it doesn't fully matter. I mean, it does help alleviate people's worries to some degree, but at the same time, I mean, it's not really gonna, in the sense of there's already so much worry around them that, you know, I don't think it's changing a whole hell of a lot, but um, I then say I'm more interested by the gem mint ratio. If the guy had 100 to 150 of these stickers, that would make more sense. I'm also worried about how the guy has no Alves and Iniesta. I don't bring that up, but that's another pretty big worry of mine. Uh, I say 50 seems way too low to have that high of a gem rate, especially if somewhere off center and dinged. I mean, based on the centering that I've seen in the past, if all five, if all 50 copies were perfectly clean, only seven to eight would even be centered enough to be considered as tens. Uh, he says, I get it. I do understand everything you're saying. Most of the copies were well centered, but not preserved. A lot of PSA sixes, sevens, just based off my naked eye. Uh, he says, the guy told me he had a friend who worked with Panini who gave him all these stickers. Again, that's a very concerning part of this, <laughs> whether that's legitimate or not. Um, if I was someone creating fake stickers, if I was the guy selling these to him and, you know, I maybe created fakes, I would tell him <laughs> that uh, my friend worked at Panini. Or even if his friend does work at Panini and gave him these, that is also concerning. So whether you look at it from an authentic standpoint or an inauthentic standpoint, both of which are concerning. Uh, whether it was a gift or it was to sell, I didn't ask. So yeah, I mean, no questions, whatever. So basically that's, that's all I knew in regard to the Iniesta before this video. Uh, we then go on to talk down here. I really don't think that there's a whole lot there really to dive into. I would say generally down there, I think he took this very personally when this wasn't really about him for the most part. Of course, we were talking about his stickers, but this could have been any person that submitted these. Like I said before, um, I do have a quote down here, I guess. Um, I do say Jesus Christ himself could have submitted these stickers and I would still be skeptical. That That's the point behind all of this. It has nothing to do with Panini Vibes, his character, who he is. It is literally just the fact that those copies went up at such a high gem rate on something that is so hard to gem and you know, relatively hard to find that I'm just going to be skeptical. And that is the way it is. He has alleviated some of the fears, but deep down, I, I still am skeptical and look at them with, you know, a lot less affection either way. If they're authentic, if they aren't authentic, I still see that sticker as significantly lower in desirability for myself. So that's me going over what I knew going into the video. Um, Panini Vibes had stated that basically I knew that these were authentic, but I was trying to portray them as inauthentic. I will say with the Zlatans, I definitely did have some more reason to believe that they were real. And in the video, I think that I portrayed the Zlatans with more affection and love than I did with the Iniestas. With the Iniestas, I was still more skeptical. And from what I got here in this conversation, I mean, he definitely sent me some things that made me feel a bit better. But at the end of the day, I, I still am very skeptical about those Iniestas uh, because nothing here is really all that convincing to me and the numbers just don't don't really line up. And at the end of the day, I have a right to be skeptical, you know, just because he sends me a few things that are supposed to make me feel better, feel better about the whole situation. They do make me feel better, but I still am pretty skeptical. And I think that that's okay. I think that he's taking this very much as a personal assault when 
like I said earlier, this is more an assault of the grading companies. Um, I don't know if I did talk about this. I tried recording this once before and, you know, we sort of went about it and I went on for way too long. So we came back with another go at it. But I talked about the grading companies and how this was primarily their fault. I made this slide in the video after talking about the Iniestas and the Zlatans. And, you know, part of the aspect and this was really the takeaway of this video no matter the case of what's going on here what's really happening is a lot of people are going to have their stickers suppressed in pricing or crashed i mean depending on what you bought different stickers at this is a huge example a psa 9 went in may for 1400 and a psa 10 then a month later went for 400 dollars less typically a psa 9 goes for you know a third of the price of a psa 10 if that's the case this PSA 10 should have either been 4,500 or 4,000, or this PSA 9 should have been 300. Either way, that's a terrible look. And that's not his fault. That's not the sticker's fault. That's none of, none of the people involved's fault. It's just the situation at hand. And that's the thing that people need to be weary of, is that if you buy one of these niche stickers and then there is a huge find, you are going to have to deal with those side effects. That is the way it is. With the Iniesta, you know, much the same. The first comp here was 3800 which was a really high sale at the time, I will say. And the PSA 10 then sells for 1500 just a month later. Panini Vibes does mention that he did not sell this second sticker and that he sold the first one, but not the second one. The second guy probably knew what was about to happen and that these stickers were much more common and just sold it because he wanted to get out of it and to be honest i don't blame him you got a super high comp right here you also have knowledge that there are going to be more of these coming to market i probably would have sold too and that seems like a great price to get out at now just because panini vibes has all these stickers he said himself i'm not going to flood the market he said i'm not the type of guy to flood the market you know which is what i would do if i was a you know somewhat smart individual that was trying to liquidate these for pretty decent prices if you're gonna sell them all you don't want to sell them all at once like you know it'd be a terrible selling strategy to bundle them all in a lot and say i'm selling 15 of these on pwcc because it, it would do terribly the best way to get your you know top dollar for them would be sell one today sell one in six months sell one in a year sell one in 18 months sell one in two years and you know space it out and so that's what he's saying he's going to do which is great for him and it does sort of keep the market somewhat stable but you do have to question over time, are they going to drop in price? Because is that demand going to keep building for something that keeps coming out in that high of grade? And also, if you are an owner of one of these, you know, do you have much hope that they're going to appreciate in price, knowing that many more are going to come to market? And so that was more so the point of the video was that one way or another, whatever it may be, there are a lot of sort of pricing factors that at least from my perspective, make pre-modern a much less enticing place to put quote unquote investment money. I know people don't want to talk about investment. Collectibles aren't investments, yada yada. But most people, I, I bet spending 1.5K on these or 3.8K on these probably hope that they stay the same price or go up in value. I'm just going to assume. I don't think people buy these, crack them out of the slab, sniff them, lick them. You know, I, I think that they're somewhat investing pieces. If you're buying PSA 10 slabs, and you're saying, oh, I'm not an investment guy. Okay, I mean, come on now. And so really that was the point of the video, uh, not to be some sort of hit piece. Someone who definitely took it as a hit piece is Jamie here, Jamie UK collector, something along those lines. Seemingly a pretty spiteful individual <laughs> based off the DMs I got. Um, I think they're important because it does mention something that we'll talk to here in a second. So I had this uh, sort of quoted at the beginning of the video. So the baseless false claims, pretty fucked up. I'm basically a scammer. I say, where in the video did I accuse him of faking stickers? I made a video attempting to protect collectors' money, and somehow I am now akin to a scammer. Hilarious. That really was the point of the video. I'm trying to protect people. I'm trying to share my knowledge, what I know, and what I can help other people with. I'm not trying to ruin someone's reputation. You would think if I'm trying to ruin someone's reputation, I'd name them. I'd say that they're doing terrible things. I do this, that, and the other. Instead, I don't mention them. I don't accuse them of faking anything, but somehow I'm trying to ruin their persona. Like if I was trying to do that, I did a horrible job, I feel like. We then go down and this is sort of the point. He says, deleting my comments was predictable. You've been deleting a ton. Uh, I then respond at the beginning saying, your comment's still up. I haven't deleted a single one. Uh, it could be a YouTube auto detect thing. Uh, I don't care enough. Never mentioned his name, never accused him of anything, never deleted any comments. So I haven't done really any of the things he's accusing me of up until this point. He says, I want it up. I don't know if he's even reading what I say at this point. We'll come to see that in the next sentences. Um, and I say, yet yeah, here you are sending hate towards me. Again, sending hate for 
some things I never did. He said, I want people to see you abusing him. Uh, again, you know, I, I don't know what he means. I never even mentioned him. I don't know how I'm abusing him. Um, I asked, what do you want up? He says, everyone knows you're lying. Lying about what? What did I say? He said, you posted his subs heavily implying his stuff was fake. The NES, I, I did imply that I think it could be fake and I still think that. Um, that is no indictment on him as a person. The Zlatans I never implied were fake and I also never said his name. So, you know, I go on to say that I posted the two notable booms and pre-modern stickers under huge find. I do not believe the Zlatans are fake and never said they were. Iniestas, I still don't believe. I'd say at this point I'm probably closer to believing than not believing, but I'm still definitely weary, and I think that that is my right to be weary. I don't believe that I have to fully agree with everyone just because, you know, certain people are coming at me for things. I still believe what I believe, and I say, but what's wrong with that? I didn't say he faked him either. So, I again, I never really said any of this. Uh, he says he posted the Iniesta set on his story, and yet you didn't believe him. Nice. Again, I, I don't know what that is. Um, I didn't watch his story. I don't think I watched it before the video. I don't know if it was after the video I, I have no clue what the Iniesta thing was about uh he then sent me some messages of him and his friends talking crap about me in their dms which i found kind of flattering they were saying one one of the texts that i found really funny was the guy said he doesn't collect 2014 prism or 2017 chrome and he hates stickers what does he even collect which is which is hilarious i don't collect two sets and i also sometimes think that stickers could be fake golly what is this guy even doing you know why is he even here he's not buying our hype sets and he thinks stickers could be fake sometimes what a piece of shit <laughs> and then he says just an example of what people are saying since i posted yeah him and his friends talking crap in the dms ruined my day for a bit but we came back and then he says at the end of the day do what you want uh i say what do you mean do what i want he says i hope you making people feel like shit and getting your followers to believe shit without evidence makes you happy and feels right to you Whew. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, he then goes on to say that the Pulisic PC sucks, and then he blocks me. So <laughs> it was a it was a fun exchange. The primary part that we're going to focus on here is that he did say deleting my comments was predictable. You've been deleting a ton. Um, I also tried to talk to uh, our boy Panini Vibes up here. I was sending him messages, trying to talk about it. He, he hasn't responded to me at all. He doesn't really seem like he wants to talk, which, you know, great. I'm respond. I'm making a response video to someone that, you know, isn't even willing to <laughs> respond to me in IG DMs. I think I'm being respectful in that regard, you know, making a full video when this guy can't even get back to me in the DMs. But basically I made a story post and he talked about in some IG lives on Instagram how I am deleting comments from the YouTube video and trying to control the narrative and control him and silence him and all this jazz. So uh, let's go ahead and go on over there. So when I look at the comments through the content creator dashboard, uh, I do find one that was held for review. Uh, this one, I think he calls this guy an idiot or something along those lines. Watch your mouth before you make allegations like that, you coward. Again, you know, just, <laughs> I mean, goodness you know, pretty, pretty hostile down there. Um, I don't know who this is in response to, cause I guess we can't see the other comment here, but, uh, basically, yeah, there was one comment that was hidden by YouTube, uh, algorithm. They held it for review. I, I don't look at these, so I, I wasn't going to go out there and, uh, put it in. I guess we'll put it in now and just say, uh, all is good in the world. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with this one. Nonetheless, we'll go to published. Uh, there is sort of a, a very strange coincidence. I will say I, I have no clue how this happened. I have no clue why. I don't know if YouTube picked it up and started blocking them. But basically, if we look back through the comments, uh, these are all the ones on that video. As we sort of start to get to the bottom here, we should find the Jamie Feller with uh, some nice comments my way. So don't want to get into it too much, but he does say that this is a disgraceful video. He's been in the hobby since 2014, which has nothing to do with the rest of his statement uh, because Panini Vibes has only been in the hobby for a few years, at least you know actively participating to a large degree. So I don't think that those two things are correlated. He's just sort of uh, boosting his credibility, I guess. And he goes on to say, just because you don't have the same access as him, or he's increasing pop counts of your stickers doesn't mean he creates fakes this reeks of jealousy uh you know i'll just throw out there i don't own any of the stickers that were talked about thus i am not worried that he's creating you know higher pops of stickers i don't own uh i also am not jealous that he lives in in europe i mean you know grand for him hope you're enjoying it um a lot of people live in europe and can buy stickers and probably could you know fly around and go find people and try to buy them like i'm not jealous of them do what you do i mean that's perfectly fine i guess to start if i was someone that just deleted posts because they came at me or that they were opposing posts with a different sort of take 
Uh, I probably would have deleted this one, right? Why would I leave this one up? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I go on to respond. It really doesn't matter. The point of this is, uh, if we keep going down, you don't really see the comments here. Um, there are more. I thought that it was going to show in this uh, sort of section, but uh, I guess not. But yeah, we have to go to a different section, and this is part of the problem. I don't know what's going on um, in terms of filter. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to work this, but basically, if we scroll down, uh, we will see some posts down here by uh, Jamie, and yeah, so... Right here, he responds, and then down here, there are actually more responses. So Leo responds, which is the Panini Vibes guy, and then Jamie responds as well. Um, and neither of these appear on the YouTube video when you go and look. So if we are over here on the YouTube video, uh, you'll see that basically beneath this post, it sort of just ends right here with FJ, F, U, C, J, D, this guy. Um, that's the final post on this thread. I don't know why that's the case. Um, whenever I look at it through my creator lens thing, I can still see them here. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a very strange scenario, I will say. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really explain it. I just know that I did not delete these because if we go and look, um, when I look at this, I have the option to remove. I have the option to hide user from channel. If I would have removed it or hid the user from channel, they both wouldn't be options because his comment would not be there. Um, and then other than that, it's always approve comments from this user, add users, managing moderator, probably not going to do it. Standard mod, probably not. But yeah, I have really no option here in terms of uh, trying to uh, change this in any way. I will say, you know, he seems to be very aggressive in his language and posting large paragraphs. Uh, I can understand why he's doing it, but I think that the YouTube algorithm might pick up on that in some way. Uh, if he's calling people ignorant and dumb and being somewhat hostile in the comment, probably, probably doesn't help. YouTube doesn't like that stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why it doesn't appear, to be honest. When I look at these on YouTube, I have so many options, right? I have pin, which I'm not doing. I don't think I've ever pinned a comment on this channel. Uh, remove, which I, if I did, you wouldn't have seen those comments over there. Those would have been gone. Uh, I have hide user from channel, which again, if I did, Jamie's post wouldn't be here. Um, I didn't silence anyone. Uh, I'm fully open to discussing this, which is why in the Discord, Vintage Discord link down below, do check it out. I've discussed in there my opinions. I've discussed them on here. And that's why I was even willing to make this video. So... Yeah, I think that that's it. I, th I think that that's way too much uh, time and effort and everyone's day into, uh, you know, a little bit of drama within the soccer card community. Um, this type of stuff, not entertaining to me. This was, you know, fairly stressful and not enjoyable at all. So uh, hopefully you guys can appreciate that at least I came out here and talked through this and tried to give you my thoughts, give you his story, uh, figure it all out. And uh, yeah, I mean... I just want to go back to scrolling eBay and, uh, you know, not having to have much of a care in the world about this type of stuff. So if you enjoyed, if you didn't, you know, hit some buttons. Love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. I, I probably won't comment nor, you know, really engage all that much because, again, I'm just so tired of all this. But, uh, but yeah, that's how you make a 30-minute video out of another 15-minute video. I guess that'll be it for me. Um, I'll see you guys around.